Week 10, Problem 7. Two sinusoidal waves traveling in opposite directions interfere to produce a standing wave with the wave function BAM. That is not a format I am used to, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we can figure this out. Right. So looking at this guy, this guy right here, that's going to be amplitude. Check. This guy, it has to do with X, so that's going to control the um, wavelength. And this guy that has to do with time, so that's going to do have to do with the traveling of the wave. Okay, determine the wavelength of interfering waves. Okay, eh, maybe that has to do with the frequency. I'm gonna say it has to do with the frequency. Things that are time related. All right, so we want to find the wavelength of interfering waves. So. T has nothing to do with wavelength. So I'm going to say that T equals 0. That way we have cosine of 500 times 0, which is a cosine of 0, which is 1. So Y of X0 equals 2 times sine of 0.2X. Because when we say, we can say T equals whatever we want. So, because T has nothing to do with wavelength, it just has to do with time. So frequency, period, maybe speed, I don't know. So when we say uh, y of x equals zero, we're still we're just going to get a sine function like this, and it's going to have waves going on forever. And we just want to find the distance between any two points. So uh, two points where it repeats. Well, we know that sine repeats between. Uh, for every 2 pi. 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, etc, etc. So I'm going to choose two repeating points, specifically 0 and 2 pi. I like to choose 0 because it's usually the easiest. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna, and I'm going to find the point in the graph here where y equals 0. So I'm going to set this equal to 0. So when I do that, I'm going to find sine of 0.2x equals no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say equal to zero. I'm going to say I'm going to find how often this the portion within the sine repeats. So I'm going to say sine of 0.2x equals zero, which means 0.2x equals zero, which means x equals zero. So x equals zero is our first point. Okay. So that's where the function has a zero right there. Bam. Even if it didn't equal zero, this, this idea would still work. If there was like a plus, a phase angle, like a plus 0.2 or plus whatever, this method would still work. All right? So now I'm going to find it with another for the next wave. So sine we know will we'll then repeat at 2 pi. Or equals zero. Another point that equals zero at is 2 pi. Right? Right. So, and I could also say then 4 pi, but then I'd have to, I'd be finding the distance of two wavelengths instead of one. So I need to find sequential repetitions to find single wavelengths. All right, so x equals 2 pi divided by 0 0.2, which equals 20 pi? No. 40 pi? Oh, I am so bad at this math thing. Why am I so bad at math? All right. 10. I'm going to say 10 equals 10 pi. Man, this is my my basic elementary math is taking a beating right now. Maybe I should stop drinking. 10. 10 pi. All right, so x equals 10 pi. So then we find the difference between 0 pi and 10 pi, which is 10 pi, and that's going to be one wavelength. Determine the wavelength of the interfering waves. 10 pi. Or 31.4 meters. Eh, I don't like how that's said, written, so I'll just go ahead. Then you probably actually have to write it out, you know, 31.415 type thing. What is the frequency of the interfering wave? All right, so now this section here to worries about the. Um, mm, let's see here. This portion right here has to do with time and how often things repeat. 
So I'm gonna we're gonna find the time. So we have so if we say x equals whatever x has to equal to make this equal one. Hmm. We'll say x equals zero. Bam! X equals zero. No, that makes the whole thing zero. It's not what I want. Um hmm, we want x equal two pi or pi over two. Yeah. X equals something, so that makes that go away. So we're gonna deal with y equals cosine of five hundred t. So cosine, hmm, cosine starts up here, so I'm gonna be like up, something like this. And it ends right. Nope, has to end. Yeah, I'll say it ends there. Or I could do it like that. Not important. Alright, so we want this inside portion to equal, and I'm going to find the z portions where it equals zero. So like right there and right there. Actually, hmm. hmm. Cosine equals zero. Actually, we could find, as long as we find the same portion for both of them, it's fine. So I could do this portion right here and that portion right there. So I'm going to find where y equals cosine of 500t. I know I dropped the point two. It doesn't matter. Equals one. I'm gonna find out the two point two consecutive points would equals one. So it's gonna. So we're gonna have 500 t equals zero, which implies t equals zero. That's the first point. We're gonna have 500 t equals two pi. So it's the same point, zero and two pi. So t will equal two pi over 500 which is, um, actually I'm just going to do it like this, which is the period, which equals one over the frequency. Therefore, the frequency will be 500 divided by two pi, just the, the inverse. So 500 divided by two pi, 500 divided by two pi, and we get, bum bum bum, 79.6 and that's going to be measured in hertz which is a one over seconds seventy nine point six hertz okay so I have no conceptual understanding of what this wave equation really looks like or how it's altering in time all I'm doing is straight math. Um, look at it, and I break it up into a time portion and a distance portion. Okay, find the speed of the interfering waves. Okay, so we know that my car goes in miles per hour, miles per hour, which is the same as wavelength times frequency. Therefore, velocity. Oh, right there. Yep. So I'm going to do equals 10 pi and then I think I had something over here was it 500 divided by 2 pi 500 divided by 2 pi eh, this could work out pretty well so cancel cancel this will become a 5 and it equals 2500 bam meters per second there we go 2,500 meters per second. Not too bad. So this one, minimal conceptual understanding. All you need to know is that X has to do with uh, wavelength, T has to do with frequency and period, um, and you isolate it. So really the way I would prefer life is if this was written Y of X and T, because it's a function of two variables. And you can isolate one variable to study one phenomenon, oscillate, isolate, the other variable to look at the other phenomenon. And then you just plug in the math and see where it goes. All right, that wasn't too bad. On to bombate.